What up, YouTube? It's your boys called the TV. Back with another story for y'all. This story is called The Detectives. You got these two detectives, right? Um, Both of their lives is not where they wanted to be, but they're making detectives. They're making decent money. You know, they're patrolling the hood. And they're also, you know, their crime wave has been down. They are two detectives in Ohio. Um, and Ohio don't really get too much of, you know, gang shit going on out there. And, you know, the, the minimum gang shit that do go on it's minimized and the one detective he become he comes across an opportunity to make money and put some action into his life because he's an action junction so this detective he's detective daniel johnson and his partner benjamin franklin so these two detectives you got daniel and you got benjamin uh daniel's the more of the the action to go get a get in the mix uh get in gunfights or uh, making money the the strippers you know he's into that that nightlife where benjamin is more so the wholesome man um you know he's a family man he's doing it by the book you know what I'm saying you got these two detectives who are who are best friends um but you know they both live different lives um what makes them go go together because you you always get two opposites people you know what I'm saying so we got them two opposites now then you comes across an opportunity, and this is where their story starts. They've been on the field about six years piece. Um, Benjamin is having financial problems. He has kids. He has a wife. He's having financial problems, staying up with bills. One of his, one of his children is sick with asthma. He's in the hospital. They have this, a medical bill. So he's having financial problems and looking for a way to, you know, do overtime, make sure his kids is fed, his bills is paid, and his wife is happy. So far, his wife is not happy due to the fact of the financial situation. She's also, you know, looking for more of a adventurous life that he can't provide at the time. Daniel's situation is uh, he's looking for acknowledgement and he's looking for, you know, for validation for whenever he does good or whenever he's in the room. He likes to be, you know, the elephant in the room. He likes the center of attention. You know, he don't have kids. He's a bachelor. Um, you know, him sleeping with different girls boosts his ego, uh, you know, him taking down the toughest guy in the city or the town, you know, getting ranks from his, from his coworkers is something he look forward to. Um, girls that flirt with him because he has a badge or he has a, a dope ass car, all that sh that glamour got to him. You understand what I'm saying? So these are two different guys from two different girls. They stumble upon a drug dealer that just came to the town. He's been in the town for about three months, making, moving work. Anybody that didn't get under this new drug dealer's broom got dealt with. So a lot of bodies been dropping ever since he showed up. Daniel comes across him in the nightclub. He not knowing who Daniel is. Daniel not knowing of him. They come across each other. Um, it was a simple bump and a greet in the club. Um, Daniel was just like a regular dude. The other dude, he was looking fly, mink coat, hella bling bling on. He had the two half-naked girls around him. In the club, and he told Daniel, watch where the fuck you going. So Daniel was like, excuse me? Watch where the fuck you going. He's like, you see me and my ladies walk in. He said, I see a dick with two balls on the side. So he disrespecting the dude. The dude was like, what? You know who you fucking talking to? This is my fucking city. This is my motherfucking club. And he looked at Daniel, looked at him, was like, fuck you and your club. So when Daniel, when, you know, his boys got up, the drug dealer dude's boys got up, came over, was like, what's up? What we doing here? One of them recognized Daniel, was like, yo, yo. Fall back a little bit. So the dude was like, what? Because the dude they know the town. He didn't know about Daniel. But them little young niggas knew about him. You know what I'm saying? They knew about him. So the dude was like, yo. He whispered in the dude's ears. Like, yo, he had fed. He had fed. Fall back, bro. He had his shit. You know what I mean? So he let him know. Dude was like, all right. I'm going to see you around. So he faded back. He went back to his section. Got the party and everything. Then he went back to doing what he was doing. He was fucking with one of the midget strippers. He was fucking with the midget stripper this night. Um, he took her in the car and he fucked the midget stripper. Boom, boom, boom. As he's fucking the midget stripper, um, the drug dealer he bumped into in the club comes out. He comes out arguing with somebody. Um, the argument didn't go was playing. And the dude was like, I ain't running shit for you. Fuck you, nigga. You ain't from this town. You, are, you, you know, he was coming at the dude. And the dude backed out his nine. And he shot the dude point blank right in his face. Boom. Blew his shit off. His guy was like, oh, shit, boy, really about what he said. 
So the dude turned to his crew was like, yo, anybody want to disrespect me, get a bullet in their face. You know what I mean? I don't take disrespect. So then you see that at the fucking the midget. Boom, boom, fucking the midget. Talking to the midget. It's like, yo, you know what that dude is? The midget was basically like, he's some new hitter in the town. He's basically taking over this and that and the third. So then you caught an idea. He already caught the dude on the body case. He approached the dude in the supermarket. This time they met in the supermarket. The second time they met in the supermarket. He didn't tell his partner though. So they met in the supermarket for the second time. And in the midst of them meeting in the supermarket, the dude was with his family. Now this drug dealer, he kept his drug dealing life away from his family. But then you recognize him. He follows him. He recognized him, saw him in the club and saw him in the supermarket and he approached him. He was like, Oh, you got a nine miller, huh? Now in the time that he approached you know, the Daniel approached his drug dealer, his his girl the girlfriend and the kid was somewhere in another aisle. They were somewhere in another aisle picking up a few things that they forgot and the drug dealer was basically by himself. So he approached him and was like, You got you like you know, you like nines, right? So the dude was like, What you talking about? And he was like, Yeah, yeah, you like nines. You like shooting motherfuckers in the face, point blank range. And the dude looking at him like, Do I know you? Yeah, you know me. We was at the club together. We was at the club together. So the dude was, then he thinking like, he, oh shit, he would realize it's the club. He recognized who Daniel was. He was like, yo, you the fed. What's up? I'm going to help you. And he was like, shit, little family right here, right? So the dude looked back and he noticed his family's coming. He was like, yo, leave my family out of this. Leave my family out of this. So then he was like, yeah, after you're done playing family time, you meet me at such and such place. Oh, so I will expose your bitch ass. So the dude was like, all right. All right, man. Good poker game, man. You know, he tried to act like it was some regular shit. And then he was like, yeah, man. See you for poker later on, man. So the wife was like, you play poker now? You play poker now? And then the dude was just like, it's something new I got into. You know, some of the guys at work put me on. It's a really a fun game. You know, I learned a lot from it. So the wife was like, you should teach me sometime. You should teach me sometime. So, he, you know, they walked away. He took them home. He ended up meeting up with the dude. And it was just like, yo, what the fuck is your problem? You coming to see what my family's did? I don't play that disrespect shit with my family. So Daniel was like, you new to this town. You know what I'm saying? You new to this town. So since you new to this town, you run you run it by me, motherfucker. I'll let you know what shit get done in here. He's like, the drug dealer was like, yo, who is you for you to be telling me what I'm going to be doing? He said, I'm the one that's going to keep your black ass out of fucking jail. I don't know you caught a body last night because I was out there and I saw you. Got you a motherfucking camera. So he pulled out his phone and he showed him. He showed he showed the drug dealer the video of him shooting the nigga in the face. So he said, now that I got that on your ass, you're in my pocket, bitch. So he basically bitching the dude. He bitching the dude. The dude was like, what you want? I want 50 grand every fucking week. You understand? When I say, when I call, I want my money. You understand, motherfucker? I want every fucking dime. In cold cash, I don't give a fuck how you get it. You better just get it to me. When I call, I want my motherfucking money. Otherwise, your bitch ass is going to jail for life, nigga. Life. He was like, fuck. So then you walked away. It was like, I'll be calling you. I'll be calling you. So then you get back in the car. The cruiser with Benjamin. He was like, what's that? What's going on? What's going on? What's that about? He's like, little nine, little nine. So a couple weeks going on. A couple weeks going on. The dude is paying in. He's paying in keeping him out of the streets, and Daniel was letting him know what competition in the ground. So, boom, that's going on. Benjamin, his his side hustle was the preacher. The preacher was also a drug dealer in the town, and the preacher was telling Benjamin, like, yo, um, you know, there's people out here that's, that's wrecking shit, his body's dropping. So the preacher was basically putting Benjamin on, and the preacher was also his brother, right? The preacher was also Benjamin's brother. So the preacher was basically telling him, was like, yo, it's another hit in this town. He's dropping people left and right, and he's putting his product in the street. Whoever's out here, they giving him info. They giving him info. So boom, the preacher tells him that. He's like, all right, I'm looking to it. I'm looking to it. He spoke to his partner briefly about it. His partner was like, oh, it's a little young boy thinking he running shit. You know, in a few more weeks, we're going to find his body. So... Benjamin was like, you sure? You sure? He was like, where you get your info from? He was like, you know, my ears are to the street just like yours. I'm hearing shit too. So then he was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my homework on my end too. I'm going to do my homework on my end. So what happens now is Benjamin started helping the preacher and the preacher was in Benjamin's pocket. So they're both extorting these motherfuckers for this bread. 
you know, from both different sides of the camp. He's extorting the preacher. He's extorting the drug dealer. Um, one of the kids that's on the drug dealer team, he ended up going to the church where the preacher was and finding out the preacher was also getting up, getting that money in. He was also making that paper. He was also making a little side hustle behind the church's doors and shit. So he told, he told the drug dealer. So one, um, one Sunday, drug dealer went over there. He went over there four deep, you know, dressed up, ready for church. And he spoke to the preachers like, yo, you cutting into my business. And the preacher was telling him, you cutting into my business. So they kind of came to some agreement where they would have territory. You know what I mean? My people won't cross yours. Your people won't cross yours. It was a gentleman talk. They talked. They came to an agreement where so no blood would be shed. Anybody that wasn't under his branch, he would let him know. Same, you know, vice versa. And it was a couple of little niggas here and there. The preacher dealt with them. The drug dealer dealt with them. They both ways. So it was, it was, it was, you know, dead in the street. It was calm. It was no war. Now the war started because Benjamin wanted, to, Benjamin wanted to be greedy. Um, him seeing all that money and you know making his wife happy and making sure his bills is paid, living that luxury life, he loved it. So did Daniel, and he was into the drugs, the coke. The strippers blowing money every fucking day, going to work, hangover. Both of them was high off the life that they was living. And when they noticed shit started to calm down, money started to slow up. So the war needed to be happening. So they started the war. Um, both of them shot somebody from each camp. And they said it was niggas in the hood doing it. They said it was Benjamin was saying it was the preacher. Then you were saying it was the drug dealer and they caused a massive war. These detectives were playing these dudes left and right. They was also helping them drop bodies. They was also helping them get money into the town, flooding it, making that money. Shit was getting crazy. Now, the reason why shit was getting too hectic, it was getting to the point where the preacher and the drug dealer had to... They having, they having all these wars. Bodies getting dropped, babies getting... Innocent people getting killed, children getting killed, shootouts happening at school... You know what I mean? People can't even ride the, the public transportation because a shootout could happen at any given moment. The shit was getting hot. The shit was getting hectic. And basically, the community was going to the preacher and was like, yo, these wars need to stop, preacher. You need to do something. And it's not. And the reason why the preacher had to step up because somebody he knew close to him got killed in this. You know what I mean? A close friend of his got killed. His nephew was also cute, which was, you know, Benjamin's nephew. So he was really on it, and he was basically telling the preacher, like, yo, we got to really find out who's doing this. And ben the preacher was like, yo, you know who's doing this, man. It's them drug dealer niggas over there. You know that. Go bust them niggas in their motherfucking head like you busted me and mine. So Benjamin grabbed him. was like, yo, bro, just because I got a badge and you my brother don't mean I won't fuck you up. He was like, get the fuck off me, brother. You came out my mom's coochie also. My dad's dick sack. Nigga, we brothers. We blood, nigga. And you doing me like this? Fuck you. I ain't paying you shit no more. So when that shit started to happen, um, somebody in, you know, the, the cop camp was snooping around. He wanted to play detective. He was snooping around and he was getting information here and there off the streets. And the information he was getting, it was like, yo, there's these dirty cops out here feeding niggas, helping niggas, letting niggas escape with gun charges and all that. So the cop was like, what? Who are these detectives? Who are these detectives? Nobody wanted to say who these detectives' names were. Nobody wanted to get them up. Because if they gave them up, they probably would have been a body dropped in these streets. But the detective was digging way into it. He went to the, the church where he would have got his information from. He seen Benjamin there. So he's sitting in a cut. Nobody really paying him no mind. He going through the church services, the church services, and everybody leaves. Benjamin's still sitting there. So what he do was he faint, like he faded to the back so where he couldn't be seen. And when everybody left and Benjamin was still sitting there, the preacher went over there to talk to him. He got a little closer to the conversation so he could hear it. Um, he heard about how the bodies was dropping and how the preacher was getting out the game. So he was like, oh, so he was like, I ain't going to be paying you no more. Bro, I'm out this shit. I'd rather go to jail than be paying you a crooked motherfucker so you I can support your luxury life. I ain't in it no more. Fuck you, nigga. You can't even help your brother. Ah, uh ah. -uh. He said, Benjamin was like, don't do this, bro. You know if you do this, I got to arrest you. He said, do what the fuck you got to do. You forgot I got shit on you too? So that made Benjamin freeze. 
And that, that snap, Benjamin, like, damn it, he tell on me. My wife gonna probably move on. My kids ain't gonna see my kids. I'm gonna be a dirty cop in jail. Niggas gonna fuck with me. Da -da 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 -da. He started doing, he was like, all right, all right, all right. So in the midst of him saying that, the cop who was doing a little digging around was coming around. He was like, hey, preacher, I just was coming for a late night to healing. You know, I'm not doing so well. You mind if I get a moment? And the preacher was like, yeah, come on. Benjamin, you know where the door is. And he took the dude. And he's talking to him. So the dude went back to the lieutenant. He went back to his captain and was telling him what was going on. So now they started to dig into Benjamin and Daniel. They started putting out cases on them. They was building a case now. These niggas is running the drug game and they setting up bodies and shit in this town in Ohio. So what happens now is they get put on wires. Them extorting a preacher and a drug dealer. They got Benjamin on camera killing his brother for bread and burying the body. You know what I'm saying? They got him on camera. Um, Daniel, they got him on it. Extorting, trafficking, they got him on some shit, and they found out. Now, cops don't like other cops snitching. You know what I'm saying? They don't like that. So the boy who did it, he did it anonymous because even his captain told him, bro, if you snitch, you go down this route, ain't nobody going to fuck with you. So what he did was he made up this fake person's character. He would come in like a bum, and he would you know, give information off the street. And people didn't realize who he was, that he was a, he was a cop himself. So he did all that. He made this information up. He was preventing. He was like uh, coming up with the evidence. He was giving out videotapes. So everything that was going down, he was at the scenes where shit was going down. Shootouts was happening. Drugs was being bought. He had all this evidence built up for this case to take these two detectives down. The drug dealer nigga, right? He found out when the preacher died, he felt like the preacher had power just as much as he. How the fuck did he die? And that's when Daniel told him, was like, my partner did it. He killed his own brother. I will, and then Danny told them, you know, Danny basically told him, like, I won't hesitate to kill you neither if you stop this money flow. Get it the fuck going. So what the drug dealer decided to do, right, he was like, I'm going to do a drop off for you, right? I'm going to do a drop off for you and I'm going to leave town for like a day or two, but I'll be back. You ain't got to worry. I'm going to do this drop off before I dip though. So he was like, all right, and I'm going to give you enough bread to hold you over. I mean, we good? He was like, yeah, that's what I like to hear. What the fuck I like to hear? So Benjamin walked in and was like, I want some of that money too. As you can see, somebody that was feeding me is gone. So you got to feed the both of us. So Daniel looked at him and was like, you heard my partner. You got to feed the both of us. We both want double. Should we make it triple? So the drug dealer was like, nah, nah, y'all good. Y'all good. I got y'all. Y'all help me. There's no competition in these streets. I could still do what I could do. So the dude set it up. He called up the cops and he said he set up his own state to get these motherfuckers off his back. I mean, he, he, he had gorillas. He had silver gorillas on his fucking back and he knew what it was. It was time to skate town. You know what I'm saying? It was either go to jail here or die here. And he wasn't doing either one. So he set it up. He put some fake money in the duffel. Boop, boop, boop. He set it up. He put some drugs in the bag. Set it up, set it up. Had one of his men drop it off. When he had one of his men drop it off, Daniel and Benjamin was there. They was like, where your boy at? He just told me to leave y'all the money and I could just skate too. So the, Daniel was like, nah, 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 ain't no you skating, ain't no you skating, come here. Come here. Right? In the midst of that, they checked the money. They seen that it was all good. The dude skated. Once he skated, the feds bum rush. Boop. Freeze, get on the ground, get on the ground, get on the ground. Lock them niggas the fuck up. Niggas is both doing some time. One got sent to another prison. Other one got sent to another prison. Benjamin lost his his uh, his uh family. The wife moved on with a dyke girl. Then he was in jail. He turned into one of them, them skinheads. Just so he could, you know, skin save his own ass. And that's how the story ended, man. You know, the drug dealer, he escaped. He went to a different state. He got the fuck up out of that mess. Uh, you know, our Peter Preacher... It's your boy Carter TV, man, and I'm out.